Hey everybody, welcome back to JD Does Dev. I'm JD, let's do some dev. So today we're going to be going through three amazing Godot add-ons that are really going to improve your workflow, especially for 3D games. These three add-ons make it extremely simple to create large, robust, visually appealing levels in almost no time at all. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one that we're going to look at is called Terrain 3D. I'll put a link to it in the description, uh, but we can find it at github.com slash tokusan games slash terrain 3D. Unfortunately, it's not in the asset library. There are some decent ones there, but this is the one that I found does everything that I need. So to install it, once you get to the GitHub page, go to the releases right here where it says terrain 3D beta latest. Click on that. Scroll down and download the zip. Now, I've already downloaded it, so let's go ahead and get it unzipped. I'm going to extract all, put it wherever you need it, whatever works for you. And now we're going to take this add-ons folder, go to Godot, and pop it right in there. Now you're going to get this message. Some extensions need the editor to restart to take effect. The reason for that is because we're using GD extension. Let me go back here really quick and I'll show you what that is. This was generated from GD extension. GD extension allows you to build add-ons using more than GD script and more than uh, C sharp. So you don't have to have the C sharp version of Godot running to use uh, GD extensions. Uh, it, it's very helpful, very useful, and allows extension developers to make extremely powerful add-ons that we all benefit from. Let's go back here. Now we've done that. We're going to save and restart. Check. There it is. So now we need to go enable it. Project settings, plugins, terrain 3D, enable, close. Now let's check our output, check our debugger. Okay, great. We don't have any errors popping up here. There may be some, you might want to keep an eye on it. You might have to restart it again, just in case. So we're going to be creating a 3D scene here. So let's go ahead and do that. 3D scene, and then we want to add in terrain 3D. Right there. That's going to add in this extensive giant map. It's huge, absolutely huge. Now, if you don't like seeing all this stuff, if you'd rather see the environment, you go to Terrain 3D and we're going to open up Terrain 3D Material and World Background None. That's you could also turn off the debug views, turn off the checkered, and now we see nothing. Great. So this is the way that I prefer to see it. Now, we do need to do a couple things before we can get started. If you look here, you can see this little error, um, warning more than an error, Story that says storage resource is saved to the scene, like error right of the storage, save as a res file, not a T res file, not as a T resource, a text resource, save it as a res file. So what we need to do there is go up here, terrain 3D storage, little arrow, save as, and I'm just going to create a folder here, resources, clever name, right? Change that to terrain 3D storage, and then get rid of that T, save it, there, now it's saved. We need to go away off, off of that, open up a new thing, and there we go. We don't need to do anything with that one that we just opened up, but it works. So the next thing that we need to do, once we have it, all we need to do is decide how we're going to, to build. Now there are some tools here that make things easier. Uh, the way that we use the way that we use textures with Terrain 3D may feel a little bit different, but it's actually very common in larger game studios and larger games. Uh, we take a texture and pack it into two single PNG files. So what we're going to do, we're going to open up Terrain 3D tools and pack textures. All right. So here you can see we've got an albedo, a height, normal and roughness. These all go together. So these two will become one file using the RGB, the alpha channel, and these will use the RGB and the alpha channel for the normal and the roughness. So right now we don't have any textures. I'm going to go ahead and grab some. Uh, I recommend CC0 textures or ambient CG uh, free textures. Let me pull that up for us here. We'll just grab a couple materials. I'm going to use a grass and we'll just skip ahead until after I've downloaded. We'll also grab a paving stones. And finally, for just a little bit extra, let's get some rocks. All right, once you have your textures, we're going to open those up and unzip them. We got three here that need to be unzipped. All right, once you have them unzipped, then we're gonna bring those right into Godot. So I'm gonna go here, we're gonna create a new folder. I like to put them in assets, 
and textures. Then go in, make sure we have that selected. Grab our folders from the file manager here and pull them right in. All right, check, we've got them. So here's how we pack up the textures. Grab this, we're gonna start with a grass. Albedo, assets, textures, grass. And you can see from here, we've got color, which is the same as albedo. Open that. Height texture is going to be our displacement. Normal texture. Uh, with Godot, we want to use GL. So if you're using one that uses DX, um, you're going to have to click that little invert Y button. I'll show you that in just a second. So GL, and this is convert DirectX to OpenGL. That's the one you're going to want to click. And then roughness, you guessed it, right there. Pack textures back in here. Packed albedo height. I'm going to rename this grass albedo height, and we're saving it as a PNG. And then it'll do a second one. Pack normal roughness, grass normal roughness. All right, so it's as easy as that. Now we can clear all these out and I'm gonna fast forward doing the other textures that I grabbed. Go ahead and do the same with the textures you have and be back in just a second with it. Okay, now that we have them all packed up, we just need to add new texture, Let's use our albedo texture, which we are gonna start with the grass. We're gonna do quick load, search for grass, grass albedo. And then same thing with the normal, quick load, grass normal. And just to be clear, we're going to name this one grass. All right, now we're gonna do the same here with the rocks and the pavers. So new texture, paver, albedo, and rock. There we go. Now we have three textures and we're ready to get started. Now, what I like to do, or one thing to consider here is that it's going to give you a very, very, very big map to work with. You see this one quadrant, this is uh, over one kilometer by one kilometer square. But all of these are actually saved in very, very small height maps that are rendered at runtime uh, using the render server. So even though it's this big, you don't need to use the entire map. And you can do stuff with shaders to shrink that down if you really want to. But what I suggest is work from the center out. Also, when you're using the paintbrushes here, highly recommend that you go into advanced, turn off automatic regions so you don't accidentally go into another one, and uh, save yourself some headaches. So what we want to do is we're gonna paint basically everything as grass to begin with. So I'm gonna set a huge brush, fuck me. So if you were paying attention, you noticed that I made a dumb mistake and the textures here, if you look, the paver, let me go back to edit this, um, is actually not a 1K image. It is, well, it is, but it's 512 by 1024. We need it to be square. We need each of these to be the same size. So that failed on me. I'm going to get rid of this one and I downloaded a placement for it. I'm just going to load that one in. All right, we're going to give this one the old heave ho. Move, get out of here. Get out of here, you badly shaped image. Pop this back in there. Make sure it goes to the right place. And we're going to recreate that. All right, so same way, veto texture. Oh. Well, we got to repack it, so I'm going to fast forward while I do that. Okay, we're back, and I think I've got it fixed. My mistake there. All right, so let's go ahead and check. Got this brush. Can we paint yet? No. You know why not? Because we never set a quadrant to use. So let's add this region right there. All right, it's going to be plain. It's going to show the first texture that we have, which is grass. And if you look, it's kind of shiny, and we don't necessarily want that. So. What I like to do is right off the bat, we're going to get rid of our wetness. We're going to dry this out. And there is a setting down here that says paint wetness. We want to turn the roughness all the way up and the opacity here all the way up. And this is this is up to you if you want to do it. And then I'm just going to wax off just like I have a big sponge sopping up all of this moisture. There we go. Great. So I'm just going to concentrate on this little corner, which is actually a pretty big corner of our map. Now, one thing you might be looking at is or, or thinking is, wow, that is a repeated texture, isn't it? You, well, yes, yes it is, but that's all right. Uh, because thinking of how close you're actually going to be to it, well, can't really tell. And if you do notice it, there's always stuff that we can do to fix it. So let's look here, grass there, and we can change our UV scale. Say maybe it, can't, it comes in a little bit too big or a little bit too small, you can shrink it down. And if we want to add some, some adjustment to it so that it, hold on, let me shrink that down. There we go. So that it doesn't look so patterned, we can just change some UV rotation around a bit. And that is going to make it a little bit less uh, less tiled. Now, you might not be able to see, but it, it does have a normal map. It does have a uh, displacement and it does have roughness on it. 
Now we could check that really quick by adding in, actually by just using our scene, changing around the sun right about there. Boom. If you look behind there, you can see that the shadows are moving around with it. So pay, pay very close attention. Pay very close. You gotta watch it really, really fast. There, whoop. Shadows, they are a moving. Looks really cool, huh? All right, so that's the first part of it. We have this. Now, here's where it gets really powerful. All right, we don't like flat, do we? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put our brush up a little bit. We're going to change our opacity so it's not too powerful. And then we're gonna choose a brush. Let's just go and choose a quick little fill. You can make it as big or as small as you want. Now this has to do with the speed or the speed that it, it rises has to do with the opacity. So if you don't want it to go as fast, turn the opacity down, make a few extra strokes. If you want to go really fast, turn it up. And well, you got mountains. So I like to keep it right around 10%, 14%, 15 So I have a little bit more control over it. We can do this for the entire map if we'd like. Put in some nice natural looking boundaries. Maybe change it up, change the brush to hill so it's not quite the same. Maybe change the size a little bit. There we go. But there, now we have a nice edge around. But let's let's make things a little bit less flat in the middle, okay? Now we don't have to use one of these fancy brushes, but we uh, you can. There are quite a few really good brushes that come with it. Say we want that. Let's say we want maybe just a plain circle to really smooth out things. Voices are yours. If you don't like it, look at all these tools that we have. We can shrink down, boom, cut a hole all the way in if we want. We can smooth it down or expand away, boom, reduce towards zero. Let's see it better if I turn on the opacity. There we go. Reduce it, expand it away. We can flatten it if, uh, with the height. So if you see like there's a plateau that you like, you want to keep it at height. Use a little eyedropper, height. And boom, we have plateau. Now, the uh, kind of be concerned about that, that plateau is a little too too high up there and no place, no way to get up. So we can just make a slope. And if things just don't feel quite right, we can always smooth it down. Now, this is all well and good, but how is this different from anything else? Well, we have level here uh, and we only have one texture. So what we can do is we go to the auto shader, turn it on, and now it's going to use textures based on the height and the angle. All right, so we can change this so that our grass is the the flat and not as steep areas and our rock is the steep areas. So auto shader on, look at auto, auto base texture is going to be zero, auto overlay texture is gonna be two and I've got those mixed up. So two and zero. So now it looks really cool because our hills, wherever it reaches a certain incline, certain angle, we get those really cool looking rocks there. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and get some more mountains in. Gonna fast forward through this. Okay, so now we have a nice mountain range, really cool looking level here, all done in a matter of minutes. So the other thing that we can do here, I mean, we have this paper just sitting here. So let's go ahead, choose a brush, and choose a circle here and shrink it down so we can have a little bit more fine control over it. All right, and I'm going to create just a little path. Putting here. Boom, right up to that. Now, I think that being tight or having a tiled appearance here is just fine because it's brick. But what isn't fine, at least in my opinion, is these jagged edges. So what we can do is turn down the opacity, choose this spray can here, which is going to overlay and just start painting on top of it. Little by little, you can add on to it, smooth things out, make it not quite as, as different. Even add in some spots in the middle here where it's like it's getting overgrown a bit. If you wanna add some rock in here too, you can add some rock over here, painting that in so it's popping up just a bit. You know, maybe built into the mountain like that. And you can see it's turning green here. That's because I'm overriding the auto shader by, by painting over where it was auto shaded. So that is normal. That's to be expected. This is all up to you how you want to do it. All right. So that's the first one of our three game changing Godot plugins. The next one that we are going to use is 
It's actually in the asset store, or the asset library. Let me just go, okay. All right, this video was originally supposed to be one video just covering three add-ons, but instead, I went a little bit long and decided that I'm gonna break it into two. So look out for part two of this series where I go over the next two add-ons that we can use to build out a 3D level with all kinds of amazing stuff in no time at all. Uh, check out the link, it should be right above this. And if you like what you saw here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified next time I post another video. And be sure to check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash jddoesdev, and I look forward to seeing you there.